lot of states are taking the initiative, Georgia, my home state being one of them, that has passed some great uh, uh, election reform uh, legislation, SB202 in Georgia, uh, that is going to take an enormous step in the direction of making voting itself much more accessible, but making cheating much more difficult. My guest today is Congressman Jody Heiss, who represents Georgia's 10th Congressional District. Congressman, welcome to the show. Always great to be here with you. I want to talk about something that you are very passionate about, which is election integrity. So to start out with, do you feel like America is doing enough to keep our elections secure? Uh, it, this last election, I think, was a great turning point to the realization that at all cost we must defend and protect our elections. I think a lot of people have been largely asleep at the wheel mm. uh, until this past election where all of a sudden we as a country had a huge dash of cold water thrown in our face mm. uh, with the realization that uh, election integrity has been compromised and we've got to get back to it. And so what are some of those steps that we are taking to make sure that voters can trust that their election results are accurate and fair and free? You know, every state's doing what they can, which is uh, constitutionally what they're supposed to do. Uh, the Constitution directs very specifically that the time, place, and manner of elections are to be left to the legislatures of the various states. That being said, the Democrats obviously through H.R. 1, H.R. 4, and some other horrendous bills are trying to take elections away from the states and federalize it again. So, I mean, that's just kind of a, as a backdrop. but. Uh, look, a lot of states are taking the initiative, Georgia, my home state being one of them, that has passed some great uh, uh, election reform uh, legislation, SB202 in Georgia, uh, that is going to take an enormous step in the direction of making voting itself much more accessible, but making cheating much more difficult. And states all around are doing uh, that type of thing and rightfully so. This is a state issue and it's something that must be protected. Is that something that the Georgia bills that you've talked about are trying to do as Absolutely. well? Absolutely, no question about it. That's the intent, the driving force behind it all. Uh, SB 202 is a great step in the right direction. It's not the final. Uh, in fact, even while we speak right now, the Georgia legislature is in session. They are adding to SB 202, which passed last year. So this is a bill that's already gone through legal challenges. It's held up. So now they're tightening it up even more with a solid foundation. And I think that's been a, a very wise direction for our legislature in Georgia to go. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about how Democrats are trying to pass legislation that would federalize the election processes. What are the implications if that legislation passes? Uh, it, would, it would totally destroy any say, uh, HR uh, 1, for example, would bring back to the federal government control of elections. HR 1 has some of the most horrendous, uh, you can't even imagine, can't, cannot fathom this type of stuff would be federalized in elections, but things like sending out ballots, live ballots to everyone on the voter registration file in every state. Listen, the national average is the, these uh, files are 10% inaccurate. Mm -hmm. So we're talking potential millions and millions and millions of people who aren't even on the files receiving ballots. No voter identification mm -hmm. associated with those ballots. Uh, drop-off boxes, ballot harvesting, legalized. I mean, some of the most horrendous gaping holes uh, through which fraud can enter in. All of this type of stuff is actually codified in H.R. 1, mm. which, by the way, has passed the House and now sits in the Senate. Hopefully it's not going to get any traction over there. But, um, yeah, they're trying to federalize elections that, with horrible, horrible legislation. Given that we've seen that there are democratic efforts to do this, is there any role at all for Congress in elections or is there just zero role that the federal According Congress to the Constitution, it's left to the states. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and look, that, that was wisely done by our founders. Our founders did this because they did not want the seat of government controlling federal elections and thereby allowing someone from another country, for example, to come in here and through bribery manipulate 
our elections. And so they said, the best way we can prevent that from happening, let's spread it out and let the states handle elections. And they also didn't want those who were gonna benefit from the elections overseeing it either. So uh, wisely, our founders set this thing up to where it's, it's left up to the individual states, uh, which is exactly where it needs to stay. Uh, and to get away from that would be very dangerous. So no, I have personally, along with many of my other colleagues, been fighting to keep the federal government and keep the, the dirty hands of federal government off the election process as a whole. Do you think Americans recognize the importance of election integrity? I think they do now, mm. more than ever before. Uh, even, and you know, this is an issue that goes across party lines. I mm. mean, even, even a huge percentage of Democrats want voter ID. Mm. I mean, you have to show an ID to do virtually anything in our country right now. Uh, but not voting, that makes no sense to people. Look, I, many others, want voting to be as accessible as it can possibly be, but almost everyone just wants to make sure that you are who you say you are mm -hmm. before you vote, that you are a legally registered voter in whatever state in which you live. That's a, a cross uh, a partisan lines type of issue. And so, yeah, I think uh, America is waking up to the importance of election integrity and they're demanding that we have it. And the issue is not who wins. The issue is, did we have a fair election? W hmm. Was that election a fair portrayal of the voice and the will of the people hmm. in whatever district or state uh, that, that the election takes place in? Congressman, I have one final question for you. I was reading an interview that you gave with a local news station and where you said that unfortunately we have millions of people right here in this state referencing Georgia who feel as if their votes don't count any longer because the election process has been so turned on its head. And you're referencing this fact that voters don't feel confident anymore in their elections. So as a federal employee, as somebody who represents Georgians at the federal level, what is your responsibility to make them feel like their votes matter? They can be confident in their vote. You know, again, because that whole issue is a state issue, the best thing I can do is put pressure on our state elected officials, be it in the uh, General Assembly or those in the executive branch in our, our state, to obey the election laws and to prosecute people who violate our election laws. It's it's unbelievable to me in Georgia. I mean, we, the whole nation has watched counties like Fulton County uh, get away with election uh, irregularities and potential fraudulent activity, potentially criminal activity mm -hmm. for decades. And why? What is the point of having election laws if they're not going to be enforced? And I just believe people are demanding that we have solid election laws and that those laws are enforced and when violated, and when necessary, people need to be prosecuted for violating election laws. Mm. What, what's the point of having a law if it has no teeth? So, you know, putting pressure on our elected officials to do the right thing, uh, I think, is the absolute most important thing that I can do as a federal representative. That was Congressman Jody Heiss, who represents Georgia's 10th congressional district. Congressman, very much appreciate your time. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me.